Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash, and I've got a fresh pot of coffee here. I've also got the brand new Successor to Clouds Mutable Instruments Beads. Now, I've been very excited about this coming out for a long time, and it is officially out, and it is amazing. So I thought, why not do a little playthrough video of just having some fun with this fantastic module. I'm going to be recording a bunch of instruments into it as well. I thought it might be quite fun to see how it fares on a bunch of acoustic things as well. So I've got this beautiful Native American flute. That's going to sound really nice. I've got this rather abrasive uh, Chinese flute, a halusi. Um, I think I might have dropped it and therefore it's broken, but it has a quite a distinctive sound. And uh, yeah, that will be interesting. I've also got this little kalimba. That will be nice. I've got a shaker, which I thought might be quite nice to try and use like almost a rain shaker. So see what kind of textures we can get from that. Uh, I've got this little ukulele. I thought that would sound quite nice as well. I've got this clarinet. Cool. And last but not least, I've got these wonderful chimes made by a company called Koshi. So let's get dug in. So, I'm going to put my headphones on so I can both hear and record at the same time. Now, one of the first things that we need to look at with beads is, I think, just the internal wavetable uh, system. If you have nothing patched into the inputs, after a while in the manual it says it gets bored and it starts just generating tones. Um, and these can be really quite lovely. Let's uh, just go over here to see what, what, what is just being generated on its own. So there are a number of wavetable banks that you can scroll through with this feedback knob on the bottom left. And then to scrub through those wavetables, you just move this time knob. I'm a particular fan of those kind of like chordy organ ones. That's really nice. There's also this harmonic uh, sign one, which is really cool. Really nice. So let's see what we can do without patching anything in to beads and just see what we can come up with. So I'm going to dial this back over. Uh, I'm going to keep it halfway. So currently we have the tone that's being generated and whatever then I add to it with this texture synthesizer stuff will be added on top. So the first thing to try is probably just bringing up this density knob a bit to the right. On the left you get fixed clocked values, whereas on the right you start to introduce a bit of random nature to it. And you can see that every now and then we're getting those little pops coming through. And these are maximum shortness and they're like stabby little envelopes. So I'm just going to move the mic over here a bit. Um, what we could now do is start to make these a bit longer. And if I bring this even further towards the side of the wet signal, we'll start to kill that actual dry, like that held note. We can start to hear the, the grains being produced a bit better. Now that's all well and good, but there's not much interest yet um, in fact that the pictures are changing. So what we could do is we could take, say, I'm just going to clock a, um, I'm just going to clock a 16 note pattern into my marbles up here, and then I'm going to feed in the X value into the pitch, and right away you're going to see if I dial this back a bit in speed. Start to dial up the pitch. It's a bit too fast for my liking. Okay, so interesting. Let's make it so it changes less regularly. And if I were to bring this back to mid-level, you can hear that that's the actual sine wave being changed. But let's just put it fully wet. 
Now this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting. Make that a bit longer. Increase the density a little bit. Sounding really cool. We're starting to get a bit of a stereo spread as well. Quite lovely. Let's bring a bit of the old reverb in. Really nice. Look at those shapes coming up in the oscilloscope. If I make it maximum length, we start to get a sort of delay effect. Actually, I don't think that will work in the wavetable mode. Let's bring the whole pitch down. Quite nice. And then you've also got these uh, attenuate randomizers, which I guess is a new word that they've clocked that combines an attenuator and some sort of randomizer. If you put it to the left, oh, look at these shapes. If you put it to the left with nothing patched in, you'll start to get um, some rather nice randomized, but closer together values, less jumpy value. So I'm going to patch this into, uh, I'm going to dial in a bit of attenuate randomization on the size. So now occasionally we're going to be getting some long notes and then some short notes, but they're not jumping massively. I mean, that's just sounding really quite nice. Let's try that on the uh, shape as well. So now we, obviously there are various shapes. We've got sort of square. Let's dial back the reverb a bit so we can hear it. Then we've got percussive. Then we've got a sort of sine triangle one. And then we've got a reverse saw. And we can play things forward. So we're taking from short value up until a long forward pattern. Or if we go the other way, we can play them from short backwards. I mean, that's just stunning. I'm going to bias the pitch down a little bit on the marbles so we can get some lower notes. In fact, let's bring this to just plus two. Really lovely. Okay, let's bring a bit of the reverb back in. And now might be a good time to talk as well about the different quality modes. You can see here that we've got uh, four possibilities for light. And these are the different um, sample rates. White is the best quality. It's called, I think, cold digital. And then we move down into the last one, which is my favourite, the four. This is the sun-drenched, or what's it called? Something cassette. I've got the manual here somewhere. Whatever, it's something delicious cassette. And you can see that we're starting to introduce these little bits of wobbles to it all. bias it up a bit again so we can get a bit more pitch change. Let's play with those different sizes again, get some short little clickies. And of course we haven't even changed the through the wavetable yet. Obviously we're on the sine by harmonic, so that's not going to sound so good. Let's move to something, let's move to that chord organ kind of one. Oh, okay, nice. So we could do some sort of smooth modulation of that with one of the outputs on the oct down here maybe. So I'm just going to take quite a slow triangle wave. I'm going to patch that into the time. And if I bring the, when, when a cable is patched into the uh, the input ports for the, uh, the modulation. Going to the right will treat it just the same as you would bringing up the attenuation on any of these knobs, whereas if you take it to the left, it just means that any time that an LFO or what you're feeding into it is above the zero line, the value of that will dictate how much possible randomization can happen internally, if that makes sense. So let's just phase through this and have a quick listen.
pretty nice. Bearing in mind, we haven't patched anything into it yet. It's just doing its own thing. Apart from getting a couple of random voltages from up here on marbles, this is all beads. Let's bring the, uh, the density down a bit, make a few less notes. shapes. Wow. Of course, if I scrub through the time, we're now going to go to a different section within that recording. We shorten those grains so they happen less frequently. down. Ooh, it suddenly becomes like Tibetan bowls. We try recording the flute now. I'm going to unfreeze that. Now I can put the microphone in. <laughs> we 
could try scrubbing through the time of this with a slow LFO as well, or a slow sort of saw wave. Because hopefully that will then, in theory, just give us... Oh, I can't see the screen. Ooh. So what's happening now is we've got um, one bar saw wave going up that's just sweeping this through the time knob. Let's make everything else fixed. So what's cool about doing something like this is you can take any source, but you can fit playing through its entirety into however long you want it to be. So I could maybe change this to be uh, two bars. And that will slow the process down a bit. Let's bring the pitch back up. Let's try playing them backwards. And of course what sounds great as well is having something being played in the background but then playing over the top of it. So if I were to bring the flute in again now... Frozen that in again, so now we should have both layers. Ooh, you can start to hear it bleeding through, which is quite nice.
those shapes. See what that sounds like. And if I make this like a static value, you'll see that it repeats the pattern because it's just triggering the same time every loop through at the same speed that this saw wave is cycling through it. So if I change this to be slightly slower as well, just make it half the speed. backwards. Sometimes the best thing to do with this module is just focus on modulating one thing at a time for a while. Try and create like a bit of um, repetitiveness. Like I've, I've set this now that I can dial in how this sounds, and then I'm going to start to fuck around with the Atenia randomizer. So let's get something that sounds quite cool. Amazing. So what I might do now is, now that I've got something sounding quite good, now I'll start to introduce a little bit of changes of the... So maybe I'll pop it in the middle there and add a bit of the old uh, smooth randomization or more jagged but close together. And just subtle seems to do wonders. back to the flute again because I feel like um, this kind of thing would sound really nice on the flute especially doing a melody like that Do. That should do. So we've got that so now, we've got that scrubbing, now scrubbing through. through. Okay. Okay. You can hear me talking through it. Okay. 
Now, instead of scrubbing through the time in the way that we are with that saw wave, we could flip the attenuator, or the attenuator randomizer, to the opposite side, which means that as the saw wave goes up, the amount of randomness will change. So towards the end of each uh, loop through, we're going to be getting different values than at the beginning. So let's try that. Shift forward a little bit, just so we don't get me. I mean, these kind of things always sound good when you then just pitch it down. We could put a very fast LFO to fuck with the pitch a little bit. So if we if we make it a very fast LFO, and then we dial in just a little bit of pitch wobble. Try the lap steel guitar. Freeze that now. Try just some held notes, see what that sounds like. I'm gonna pop it back, regular pitch, put it halfway, no reverb, don't need that. Let's just get cracking. So let's do 
octave note playing there so in theory I could now fuck with the pitch and make something really quite beautiful with this so let's use the output of where was this going let's use the output of that to change the pitch and are we ready that.
Now, it would be silly if we didn't try putting rings into beads, because it seems like the most obvious thing to try. So I'm just going to unplug everything we've got here, and we're going to start again. So let's take the output of rings before it starts generating its own wavetable. Let's pop that in there. And we shouldn't have anything coming through yet. And why don't we take Volpa Octave and we'll just do something... There we go, the classic. God bless rings. Let's put it on that nice scorched cassette mode. Do a bit of a um, pitch wobble on the position. Let's try the different mode. Really nice. Let's start to bring in a little bit of that. Um, let's use the same clock, actually, to to trigger to trigger a seed. Let's use a different clock. Let's use the X output. Um, sorry. Okay, let's start to bring it in. I'm going to pop the size in the middle. and slightly evolve with a bit of unlocking of the deja vu. Let's add a bit of motion slowly. I'm going to patch one of the, the slowest output of Oct into an attenuator. And I'm going to take the output of that attenuator into the bias control of the pitch. So as I slowly dial that up, we're going to have pitch change over time, even though it's staying same pattern. take the X output 
uh, CV output of marbles and use that on the structure. Let's see if we can get some cool sounds change over time with that. Try a different one of the audio qualities. This one's got less of that bright noise. make the actual uh, wobble things that we're getting an octave above, try and find that. Well folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you had fun on the adventure, then please remember to like, comment and subscribe and click that notifications button if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my future videos too. If you'd like to take your support a step further, then please consider becoming a patron also. And please remember that I am also a Bitwig certified trainer in case any of you would like one-to-one -one tuition on Bitwig. In the meantime, happy Monday and happy creating.